سبحانه وتعالى السيد إن صورة آل عمران verses 185 كل نفس دائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Very simple verse that describes the life that we live in as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this life that we live in or to, to, to go through this, the, the, the translation of hadith or of the, of the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that every, every soul is going to taste uh, death and each person will be given what they have worked for on the day of judgment he says whoever avoids the hellfire wins or he, yeah, whoever avoids the hellfires and enter uh, paradise wins and then he concludes with saying that this life that we live in is nothing but a mirage it's nothing but a fake uh, life that we live in and we chase after so when we look at this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said, is, is, is describing this life that we live from birth until we reach 60, 70, 80, 90. Uh, some don't even reach that, uh, that age. And we've known plenty of people in our community who, you know, didn't make it to their 20s and 30s and 40s. And, you know, people in our community that used to pray with us who are no longer with us. And a lot of times when you think about the concept of death and the people that die around us and the people that we love, we tend to forget about them. Um, you know, we, we, we will grieve, we will have sadness in our hearts, we will have, you know, that emotional connection that, you know, we, we really want to do uh, something for them, but eventually people move on. And uh, one guy was talking about a study that, that, that was done, and this probably may not be true or accurate for, for the Muslim community, but he said when people die, you know, you're lucky if 10 people came to your funeral. And the guy, was the, the guy that was giving the, uh, the talk, he was a very popular, very famous guy who was giving lectures, and he would have thousands and thousands of people attend his lectures. And he said, you know, if... if if only 10 people are going to come to my funeral, then I would really have to think about what is it that's going to matter? What would make people come to the, to the funeral and what would make people remember me? And in our, in our situation as Muslims, usually when we hear that people have died or passed away, you know, we try to attend the funeral, we try to attend the, the, uh, the janazah prayer, but eventually after we leave, after we're done, and, and a lot of times you'll notice it is, you know, by the time people get in their cars, and just start driving away from, from the cemetery, we completely forget about that person. We completely disconnect with, the, with what happened. And, and if any dua we made for them at that point is probably the most dua that we're going to give them. And if you have children, if you have righteous children and you're lucky enough, then they'll make you know, some sadaqa jari or some, or some dua. And then by the second generation, you know, your grandkids are most likely have forgotten about you and they're not going to make anything uh, for you. So the concept of death, of death as we see it, we really have to focus on two main things. One is what can I do for those who I love who passed away and then what can I do for myself to prepare? Because if they were lucky enough to have a righteous child that can make dua for them and, and, and can make um, you know, a, a continuous uh, good deed, then we may not be as lucky. So we have to focus um, our attention towards what we do in this life and how much of it is actually going to count. Uh, you know, I can, I can study for an exam and I can spend months and months and months studying for an exam and I can learn everything that I need to know, but unless I'm learning about what's actually going to be on the test, then everything that I'm studying is probably useless for that test or for that exam. And this is what we have to think. This is where we have to shift our focus from this dunya and from this life of, you know, where do I go from here? You know, how do I judge myself now before I am put in a position so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge me? And this is something very simple. Sometimes we think that things are very complicated. We think that, you know, I need to, you know, do a lot of things to really get to that point. But when you look at your life, when you look at what you do, 
you'll probably be able to tell right away if you're going to the right direction or not. You'll be able to tell if you're spending time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. Or if you're spending most of your time, most of your energy, most of your money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or not. And, and we've, we've heard plenty of khutbahs that talk about how you get into Jannah or how you get into uh, the, the, uh, and, and the, you know, the good side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the sunnah. And, and, and the possibilities are endless. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us plenty of choices, has given us plenty of opportunities, and has given us plenty of ways that will get us into paradise and help us avoid the hellfire. The question is that we have to think about ourselves is, where am I from that? Um, every time you go want to take a test, there's always you know, a practice test or a practice exam or, or they tell you go practice before you go take that test. And this is what we have to think about. Have we practiced for the day of judgment? What did I do to practice me standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say, okay, well, I have done one, two, three, four, five, six, or I have committed one, two, three, four, five, six sins. And it's very easy to find those out. Now, we have to think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or we have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always putting us through hardships. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always, you know, putting these hurdles is putting these, these issues, is putting these hardships in front of us to see where we react or how we react or where we go and what we do. And the first thing we have to remember is that we have to stay in the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith um, that Allah subhanahu or the Prophet sallam, says, and the hadith is narrated by uh, Ibn Abbas, uh, that says, you know, كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا غلام إني أعلمك كلمات and that com the, the, the companion was behind the Prophet صلى الله عليه and he told him I'm going to teach you some words of wisdom he said احفظ الله يحفظك احفظ الله تجده تجاهك that, you know, you seek that um, or you, you, you safeguard the, the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save your own boundaries Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will safeguard you from the problems or from the issues um, that you have. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also be close to you into providing that help or providing that support or providing that, the, 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 whether, whether it's physical, spiritual or mental, whatever help that we need, this is where we have to, go, to, to have that constant connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, you know, focusing in our, day, in our daily prayers help us with this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you look at the, 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 the definition or, or the, the meaning of the word salah, it's that connection between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is where we have to constantly continue renewing that relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every day when we do Fajr or Maghrib or Duhur or Asr or Aisha or any prayers that we're doing, we have to renew this connection. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when we, when we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's always there for us. And he says, you know, uh, and if you ask, So if you ask anybody, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and if you're seeking the, the help, then you seek it from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith goes on to say, you know, that, that anything that you can do, um, or, or nothing that anybody can do that can harm you, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it for you, and nobody can help you with anything, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it in for you. So everything that we do in this life goes back to the same point which is where do we stand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our side then we really have to have that connection established with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to have that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's very simple uh, uh, analogy that we can look at is, is the exercise analogy. When you, when you look at wanting to lose weight, for example, if you decide that you want to take the route of losing, of losing weight, what you do is you decrease your intake of bad calories or bad food and then you increase the intake of, um, of, of good food, right? And then in between you try and exercise. But if you balance the two, you know, if you balance the, the bad intake and, and increase the good intake, then eventually you start losing weight and eventually you reach your goal.
as long as you stay consistent with this goal. And this is the same concept we can use in trying to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in trying to renew that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do good things and we do bad things. It comes a matter of which one wins, which one will overcome the other. Do I constantly try to improve myself? Do I constantly try to, to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we know the hadith when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the hadith Qudsi, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, the, 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 the closer you get to me, the more closer I come back to you. And he said, for you to do that, you start with the fara'id, you start with the requirements, and then you continue doing the requirements until you start adding the nawafil, doing the extras, doing all the sunan, everything that's not required, but it's very recommended for you to do. And he said, once we continue with that, we're going to reach a point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to love us. And then once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that love, then that's it. Then we're set. Then we really don't need any more help from anybody else. Because I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on my side. I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me the protection that I need. Allah, I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me the support that I need. And I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me everything that I need. So think about what is it that you want to do. Think about which route that you want to take. Think about your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How close do you feel when you have the you know, one-on-one -on -one relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we all know within our hearts. Nobody can really tell us how strong our faith is, how strong our iman is. You know, when we pick up the Quran and read it, do we feel that connection? When I, make, when, I, when I make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do I feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening for me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering my prayers? Or is it just coming out words out of my mouth with nothing connecting to the heart? This is where we have to visit ourselves. We have to start disconnecting ourselves from the pleasures of this dunya. And there are plenty. The pleasures in this life are plenty. And we've talked before about the pleasures of this dunya. Plenty of other uh, people talk, talked about the pleasures of, the, of this dunya. So there's really no need to go and talk about those pleasures and, and the dangers of those pleasures. It comes down to how much are you getting yourself involved in those pleasures? You know, how much time do you spend on your car and in your houses and, and, and going out and in, on your clothes and your furniture and, and things that at the end of the day will not help you one bit on the day of judgment. How much of it are we spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And like I said before, spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't necessarily mean financial. This could be something where you can do um, uh, volunteering your time, giving up your time, giving up uh, you know, some, some kind of advice, support, things that people need. Doing things within, within your community, helping your community to become a better community. And we really have to understand the concept that death is coming upon us. We know that we're all going to die. We all know that at one point we're going to be buried underground and we all know that we're going to be judged. But yet we continue putting this in the back of our minds. We don't really think about it much. We don't you know, worry about it much. We live with this illusion that my life consists of me going to school as a kid. <coughs> Me going to school as a kid, getting my high school degree, hopefully with good ACT scores and good grades, and then I get into a college, decent college, you know, have a decent degree, get a decent job, get married somewhere in the process, have kids, raise your kids right, and then we curl up and die and, and eventually we move on, right? And then the next generation comes and the following generation will come. But then we never add the concept of judging ourselves before we get judged. We never add the concept of how much of an impact am I making in this life for myself 
and then for those who I love and for those who I want to, to help continue. I mean, remember, we are the people that the Prophet ﷺ said that when a man dies or when a person dies, all of their actions stop. All of their accounts for the good deeds and the bad deeds have stopped with the exception of one of three. And one of them is having a child that makes dua or having a child that makes a good charity for his deceased parents. So where are we from continuing that hadith? Or where are we from following that hadith for those people that have gone? For the people that have passed? And how much of it are we doing for ourselves? Because remember, if our children are going to remember us for days, months, if we're lucky, years, eventually they're going to get busy, they're going to get old, and then they're going to forget. Life is going to consume them just as life consumed us, just as life consumed our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents to the point where nobody's really working for their hereafter. Think of it as in terms of, of, a, of an investment. You know, what are you doing on this dunya so you can collect for your retirement? Because this retirement that we're planning for is for eternity. So whatever you do in this investment is going to make a difference. It's going to be the difference of you skipping judgment day. You do enough to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know what? You have earned it. I don't need to judge you. I'm going to forgive all of your sins and you're going to go from point A all the way into paradise. And you're going to skip all of these different hardships in between. Isn't that what we really want? That we live in the grave this happy life in between, between the time we die and the time we're judged, have this beautiful life in the grave and skip all the punishments of the grave. And then once we live or once we are res resurrected from the grave to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judgment day, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, you know what, yeah, you're good. You pass. Free pass. No judgment, nothing. I'm taking you straight into paradise. And then not even, you know, be put in the first level or the second level, but, you know, go all the way to the highest level of paradise. You know, with the people that are on top of the line. This is something we all wish, right? We all want. We want to be those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take and, 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 and select from the billions and billions and billions of people that are waiting to be judged. To say, you are being taken in front of the line, and then from the front of the line, you know, the first thousand people, the first million people, I forgive completely, and all these people are going to be put into heaven. This is a very nice feeling to have, but it's nothing that can be accomplished by wishing that be part of those people. It is nice to have that wishful thinking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have that mercy on me, but then I really need to put an effort into it. I need to keep in mind that today may be my last day. Today may be my last day where I live on this earth and I do any good deeds. If today was your last day, where would you be? What would you do? How much impact have you left on people? How much good impact versus how much bad impact have you left on people? How many people will actually come to your uh, Janazah prayer? If you happen to pass away during the week and your Janazah prayer is during a weekday when everybody's working, how many people actually take off to come to your Janazah prayer to make sure they make dua for you when you are prayed on and then when you are buried? And how many people are going to be left, you know, to just, well, whoever shows up is, is good for me. 
how many people know if your children are or if your children are going to make dua for you or if your children are going to commit or do any charity work in your name we don't have any of these answers guaranteed right because you can move to a different city tomorrow you can move to a different town or you can move to a different country where you know nobody but then if you have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have done what you really needed to do then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you we've had a janazah two janazahs in one day in Cincinnati a lady that was uh, uh, a recent convert an older lady uh, hasn't been Muslim for I don't think it's even been a year but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted her to have a good janazah prayer he had it done with another person whom people have loved so he had the whole masjid full of people making janazah prayer on this lady who probably knew very little people in the community so that's why we really need to establish that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why we really need to establish that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dear brothers and sisters we've talked about death before we've talked about the relation that we need to have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before and we've talked about judging ourselves before we are judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the question is how much have you done from the last time that we've spoken about this until this time did you just forget it the minute we left did we let this dunya keep our minds busy with thinking about money with thinking about problems with thinking about you know the issues of this life subhanallah shaitan does not make our financial problems come to our mind except the time when we're trying to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you say Allahu Akbar to start the prayer and then you start thinking about oh my you know credit card payment my car payment my house payment my this bill my that bill am I gonna get a raise this year am I not am I gonna lose my job what issues do I have and we continue thinking about all these problems when we're trying to establish that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if you want to take anything out of this khutbah, think about the concept that death is really coming upon us. So one, revisit the fact that we know that we're going to die. It's just a matter of when. And although we know that we're going to die, we need to think that it's really something factual that we really try to, to taste. And then once we realize that, we have to judge ourselves. How much have I done to save myself how much have I invested in the hereafter because a lot of times we think that okay you know when I get to retire you know when my kids are grown when I do this then that's when I am really gonna put that much effort into the hereafter which is the wrong way of looking at it we have to invest now we have to think about how much of this can I invest how much money can I invest how much time can I invest how much energy all of those things will help us and then at the last point is that for those who have passed for the loved ones that we know who have passed how much am I doing for them because if we really love them we need to be making dua for them and we need to be making a charity work for them so they can continue collecting those hasanat we have a death in our community and then we have birth in our community you know one, one of our um, uh, members father passed away so we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him and, and, and take him in paradise and she'd ask that we make dua for him after after salah so uh, Imam will make dua for us and then Imam also had the daughter born this week as well so we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the child and, and, and bless the family so think about those things from that perspective what is what is life and then what is death